Good morning, and welcome to Cory Alliance Church. It's good to see everybody out this morning, and uh, you that are online as well. We're good to have you with us in our morning worship service. Hey, if you are a guest with us today, uh, feel free to fill out the back of your bulletin and kind of tear it off uh, in, in identifying uh, who you are and uh, letting us know who uh, where you're from, and it's it's good to have uh, this filled out for us. And when you're done with it, there's a box in the foyer that's marked for uh, offerings and stuff. You can just slip it in there or hand it to one of the ushers. Just a few announcements uh, this morning. Uh, if you are a youth and you're uh, entering the sixth grade, it, you are invited to join the Refuge Youth Group uh, for an evening of games fun and fellowship on Sunday, uh, July 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. So uh, come on out, uh, plan to get wet. Uh, oh yeah, come prepared to get wet, weather permitting. What? Okay, all right. Even if it's raining, they can't go outside and get wet. All right, uh, unless it's thunder and lightning like we had this past week. But anyway, uh, young people, uh, if you're entering the sixth grade, please join the youth group. Uh, there's no ju uh, children's church today, so please make note of that. And uh, there's plenty of Edinburgh camper shores out there in the foyer. Pick up uh, your copy and plan to uh, join us at maybe a couple times a week, maybe for the whole week. There at Edinburgh camp coming up in August. Uh, last call for the baby bottle boomerang uh, bottles. If you haven't returned them, please do so as soon as you can. This week was an exciting week. We had the Family Life uh, Theater team here with us, and they would just like to let you know uh, in a note. Dear Corey Alliance, thank you so much for allowing us to host the youth theater workshops at your church this this week. Pastor Dan was very knowledgeable and did a wonderful job in checking in on us. Kevin was very helpful in setting up the sound and the families who brought us food truly blessed us. The students here are full of talent. We pray God will bless your church and ministry uh, for the kindness you have shown. Sincerely, Carmi, Grace, and Judah. What a tremendous uh, job that they did um, in ministering for the Lord on Friday. And, uh, and all week long, the kids did a tremendous job. I peeked in a couple times and they were just amazed at the talent that is in this church. So maybe we'll do it again uh, sometime maybe next year. So uh, if you're a young person, ages 8 through 15, be thinking about that. Start saving your money now. Every quarter counts, and uh, probably by the time it rolls around next year, you'll be able to, you'll be able to pay for the, the tuition. So it's uh, certainly a, a wonderful ministry. Would you join us in worshiping the Lord this morning with our worship team? Please stand. Good morning. It is great to be here with all of you to uh, just worship the Lord together.
this worship time that we could gather and lift these words and these songs to you, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you so much that what we sing is true, Lord. From the, from the cross, Lord, you saw us and you loved us still. Lord, you looked upon our sin, our shame, our struggles, Lord, and, and you paid the ultimate price for us. to love we just praise your holy and matchless name Lord. we thank you bless this service we pray amen We're reading God's word this morning we're in John chapter 4 in verse starting with verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more believe, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Let's pray. Our Father, faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And Lord, in our story this morning in the scripture, Lord, we discover that there was a great story that a woman had heard, Lord, and had heard about the precious gift from God, your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. And I pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, that we will not forget, Lord, this message, this message of love. And Lord, not only would we be hearers of it, but Lord, we would be doers of it in the sense of Lord of sharing this wonderful truth to others, just as this woman did, the Samaritan woman. And she went back to the village and shared it with others. And they came to see Jesus and to hear him and accept his offer. And Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that as uh, we gather in this house and we know there are loved ones, Lord, that are home this morning, perhaps some tuning in as far as Peru, others perhaps in Israel, others, Lord, in the outermost parts of this world because they are able to do it through the internet. Lord, I, hear, I pray that they are worshiping uh, the one and only God. In the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Worshiping the Lord with us. And giving you glory. Lord we also pray for those who are challenged with some physical things Lord in their lives. We ask for healing. For their bodies. We pray for those Lord emotionally that are distraught. And tense. And unsure of what's going to happen for tomorrow. And they're worried about that, Lord. Would you give them a peace and comfort, Lord, and to just tell their hearts and their souls today, Father, that you got this. Would you comfort them? Would you strengthen them? Would you give them hope, Father, from your word? And Father, we'd also pray for those who are finding that their financial needs are not being met. Perhaps they lack employment. Perhaps a paycheck may be too small. Or perhaps, Lord, they have faced a financial crisis, an unexpected bill that they didn't perceive coming. Lord, would you provide for them today? Would you enrich them from the heavens? Lord, with your love, may there be actually even 
uh, funds, Lord, that come from, it seems, nowhere. Lord, you are able to meet all these needs. And we put our faith and our trust in you. Lord, thank you for Family Life Ministries today. Lord, as we think of the um, Family Life Network and the radio station, Lord, today we just pray that you will bless them. I thank you for the team that was here this past week. I thank you for Grace and for Carmi, for Judah, Lord. I know, Lord, they have uh, education ahead of them. They have more plans, Lord. Uh, for the fall, they have more churches to go to or areas to go to to present this theater workshop. And I pray that you will continue to bless them on the way and the other teams that are out there, Lord. Use them, Lord, for your glory, I pray. Thank you for the gospel presentation they brought um, to this area this past week. Continue to pray for those who are traveling afar, especially our international workers. Uh, a lot of them are heading back to the field, and we ask God that you would give them travel and mercies. I do thank you, Father, for the richness that come to us from glory, for your kingdom's purposes, and thank you for the tithes and the offerings that have been brought into this house today, Lord, to be used for your kingdom's sake. And I pray, God, that it will be used faithfully with good stewardship and that we would make a difference in our community here. So Lord, would you continue to bless us and use us, Lord, in the weeks and the months and the years ahead, bringing back the King of kings and the Lord of lords is what you've called us to in presenting the gospel of Christ. Let us continue to do that. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand with me? We're going to say hello to your neighbor next to you. Uh, go beyond your family this morning. Hello to somebody you haven't seen in a long time. We're singing this morning hymn number 503, Fill My Cup, Lord, Fill My Cup.
Ich Morning's message is uh, centered around, uh, actually centered around God's love. And uh, of course, Jesus is having an interview with uh, the, probably one of the least expected folks that you would see him talking to. 
And it's uh, certainly the classic story of the uh, talk Jesus has with a Samaritan woman. woman. And uh, so here we are in John chapter 4. I, I would like you to keep your finger in the beginning, of course, of John chapter 4 and perhaps right on down to where Jesus um, uh, has more people come out from the town. Uh, I think it's verse uh, 42. Uh, where it kind of uh, changes uh, course a little bit. In another interview, Jesus goes in uh, to another person. But uh, this morning, we are in John chapter 4 and, and uh, kind of glancing through verse 1 and then um, the rest of it. So just keep your finger there. I'm not going to read this whole passage, but just uh, highlight it at different points this morning. So would you bow with me in prayer as we get started in this message today? Our Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word and uh, how you speak through your word. And Lord, I, I'm thankful, Lord, that when in doubt, when there is perhaps the lack of preparation, Lord, your word always comes true. And Lord, you are able to speak to us to penetrate our hearts and our souls, Lord, with truth. And Lord, I pray this morning, Father, as we are in your word, as we hear it spoken, as we think about some of the things that Jesus spoke to this woman about, Lord, that your spirit would speak to us about these points as well. So Lord, would you fall fresh upon us, Lord, this morning? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So why was Jesus speaking to this woman of, at the well? You know, she was a woman, which was a kind of taboo for men to be speaking alone at a well with a woman. And another fact that's here is she is a Samaritan woman, which had two red strikes against Jesus, because you didn't do that. But Jesus takes this opportunity to enter into this woman's life. And to talk to her and ask her for a drink of water, which he wasn't supposed to do, but he did anyway. He was looking for a bridge to enter into her life. So why did Jesus talk to this woman at the well? First of all, Jesus talked to her because he loved her. He loved her. He understood her condition. He loved her, but he also understood that there is a gift that the Father in heaven wants to give to this, this lady. Jesus said in uh, John 4.10, he says this, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he uh, would have given you living water. You see, in, in the heart of Jesus, he had God's gift to give to this lady. He wanted to give her living water. This gift is so precious. It's a love gift from the Father. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, Paul says that love is the greatest gift to, God's love is the greatest gift to us. Actually, in, uh, in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13, it says, says that love is the greatest of both faith and hope. John 3, 16. The famous passage of Scripture is actually spoke of on um, a Friday morning with... Uh, with the Family Life Network, and, uh, and it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God's love. His precious gift of love through his Son, Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, It says that God is love, which is all-encompassing, all-protecting, 
all delivering. And the scripture passage itself reads as this. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because what? God is love. At times in ministry, I I have come alongside of individuals that can present the gospel of Jesus Christ with clarity. I have found that even in our ministries here at Cory Alliance Church, there are gifted men and women in this church that know how to communicate God's word very well. I witnessed that just recently, and not going into details, but all my brother provided to somebody that was in need of the gospel is to present the gospel to them and speak of God's love for them. He did it from his heart to this person's soul. It was a message of love. And that's where Jesus went first, with a woman as, uh, at this well, to share love, the love of God. And that should be our first point to understand that as you're sharing stuff about God, please share about his gift of love towards us. Secondly, Jesus talked to her because she was lost. She was lost. For the Son of Man, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save uh, the lost. The lost. He actually, Jesus revealed this woman's condition. How would you like to go to Jesus? He didn't, have, he didn't have any crystal ball in front of him, did he? He knew her life. And look what he said in John chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Now here comes the crystal ball, right? Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. So Jesus identified her sin. She's with a man. It's not her husband. She's had five husbands already. In in the math in my mind, that's six, right? She was lost. And Jesus wanted to find her. He revealed her condition, first of all. And the second thing he wanted to do is to forgive her. He didn't bring all this up to leave her in shame. He wanted to forgive her. There's another situation in the Gospels that we find where a woman was uh, crying at Jesus' feet and and she was bathing Jesus' feet with her tears and she took her hair and was drying Jesus' feet. And the, the disciples got irate about that. In verse... Uh, In Luke 7, 14, we read this. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. So Jesus is in the ministry of forgiveness. Y'all know that. We read about that. We know about that. We know it in our hearts. Jesus forgives us of our sin. And not only that, Jesus also wanted to cleanse her. He wanted to cleanse her. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 7, and then verse 9, it says this, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, my friends, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And verse 9 is so important. If we confess our sins... 
He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is God's truth. We tell you not a lie this morning. It's not the good works that we do that earn our way to heaven, but it's the grace and the love of God that enters into our hearts and our souls in such a way that when we know that we have sinned against him, we ask him for forgiveness and he forgives us of our sin. He purifies us from all unrighteousness. His blood, my friends, did that for us. He cleanses us. He cleanses us from all our sin. So he revealed her to his condi- her condition. He forgave her. He cleansed her. And he wanted to remove something else. He wanted to remove the appetite for sin in her life. In John uh, 8.36, it says this. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I always get the picture, and this picture comes to my mind because I heard a preacher preach it when I was young. I was in the army at the time. I was uh, at my, let's see, where was I? Um, At my duty station, and I went to an Alliance church, and the pastor there gave an illustration because he was former, he was in the Air Force, so he brought this great big duffel bag. He filled it full of clothes, and he put it on his back, and he says, you know, this thing is weighty. This duffel bag on my back is so weighty and heavy. He says, that's what sin does to us. It becomes so weighty and heavy. Basic training, I was in uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky, and they talked about break, uh, uh, back-breaking hill or some sort of weird name. It was this little hill compared to what our hills are like in upstate New York. It was a tiny hill in, in comparison to what I was. Heartbreak Hill is the name of the, the hill. And they warned us about that. You're going to have 80 pounds on the back of your back and it's going to be hot and you guys aren't going to make it up that hill. It was a piece of cake. I, I did see guys that couldn't make it up that hill. <laughs> but the weight... Even the weight of sin sometimes lays, and a lot of times weighs heavy on our hearts because we're not good enough to take care of it. Only Jesus can take the weight of that sin off us. And we just, to ask, we just need to ask him to remove that weight. You see, Jesus wanted to remove the appetite for sin in this Samaritan woman's life. So if the sun sets you free, the word says, you will be freed indeed. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, this is probably one of the toughest identifiers to sin and a list of sin that you will find in the epistles. But the Apostle Paul makes it clear to this church. He says this, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And he makes this statement that's always puzzled my mind, but I also see it in other passages with other apostles. I warn you, he says, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Are those tough words? Very tough words. Some of these sins that he lists here are little tiny sins. But a lot of them are heavy-duty sins. But sin is sin. You cannot separate them. But the hard words, I warn you, he said, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Black and white. 
There's no in between there. You see, my friends, Jesus wants to forgive and cleanse you as well. He wants to cleanse me. Matthew 9.13 says this, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but who? But sinners. In John 6.37 it says, All those that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. God opens his arms wide. Jesus, is, Jesus opened his arms wide when he was on the cross and was nailed for us. Thirdly, Jesus talked to her because she longed for satisfaction. She longed for satisfaction. John 4, 13 through 15 says this. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, I can just see her. With tears rolling down her eyes, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. You see, that water there, my friends, was from an historical well. And as long as she was drinking from it and had, in her mind, had a connection from her ancestors, she thought that was good enough. Special spirit water. But the water that Jesus was talking about is about the water from heaven. The water, Jesus said, I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Reverend Francis Dixon says this. He says, Is there anyone anywhere who does not long for a deep down heart satisfaction? Nothing on this earth that is material or temporal can really satisfy the deepest needs of our hearts, things we can handle or see may bring temporary relief and pleasure, but soon we thirst again. Money, a beautiful home, an excellent job, these do not satisfy if God is left out, and Jesus longs to give full satisfaction. He's longing to give you and I Full satisfaction. Jesus talked to her lastly because he wanted to liberate her for a mission. He wanted to liberate her for a mission. John, 14, John chapter 4, verses 28 through 30 and 39, that was our reading this morning, said this, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the to the people, come and see. A man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. You see, she didn't share a sermon. She was the sermon. Her testimony of what happened to her when she met Jesus, her life changed. She became an instrument in the Lord's hands. Do you realize when you think about instruments, especially musical instruments, they have different sounds that they make. 
So I will tell you and offer to you this morning, you can be an instrument in God's hand. Yes, you may have a different sound, but the same message, a different tune, yes, but yet the same message. All three, all four of my kids played instruments. One, our first guy was a trumpet player. Our second guy, he went bigger and better. He went with a tuba, big old tuba. My third son, he played um, percussion, um, very good with percussion. Uh, played piano, and our daughter played the flute. And uh, they all, of course, make all different sounds. But they were instruments with one purpose and plan. Whatever the number they were playing on in the high school bands, they were together to bring out a one message song with many variations and sounds. Likewise, when it comes to sharing the gospel, we can be an instrument in the Lord's hand. Maybe a different tune, but the same message. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, we learn that we are ambassadors for Christ. The word says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us to implore, implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I've learned many valuable lessons over the years in ministry, but I think the first and foremost thing that happens in opportunities that we have to minister to people is that they will come to a place to be reconciled to God. Don't be reconciled just to the church or the ministry, but be recon reconcilable to God himself. That's the first step. And so that's our message. The last point is, is that we are vital witnesses for the kingdom of God. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. My friends, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think you do also to be witnesses for God, to be ambassadors for him in Cory in Columbus, in Union City, in Wattsburg, to the outermost parts of the earth. There is a tremendous message that Jesus brought to the Samaritan woman's and at this well. Because first, he loved her she saw, he saw that she was lost. He also saw that she had a longing to be satisfied. And lastly, Jesus saw as he liberates her in the precious, with the precious blood of Christ that she is going to be a useful instrument in God's hands. There are many people who have come to faith in Jesus and has transformed, Jesus transforms their lives for his glories, for his Father's glory in heaven. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning, Father, for your word again as it speaks to us. In the life of this Samaritan woman, Lord, this story has been told from the time a child is uh, before they even enter into school, Lord, of how Jesus' love came to a woman at the well. And Jesus gave her living water. Living water that is meant for all eternity and for God's purpose and for his glory. And I pray, Lord, here this morning, if there's anyone here today that is, is really getting this this morning, Lord, that your love is penetrating their hearts. 
Perhaps they realize they're lost and you're ready to find them. Perhaps there's a a great need, Lord, in their hearts, Lord, to be satisfied. They have such a thirst. Would you give them living water this morning, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ? Perhaps there's individuals here today, Lord, that, yeah, I know Jesus. He loves me. I have been found. I have been found. I am satisfied in Jesus. And Jesus, I want to be your instrument for your kingdom. Would you use me? Would you use me to bring glory to the Father so I can see others come to faith in Jesus? Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in these closing moments. First, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing in closing uh, hymn number 506, Love Found a Way. 506.
would pray this morning, Lord, a benediction, Lord, that love will find a way, God, that you will find a way to reach that last soul for you. One more soul out there, Lord, that needs Jesus. May we pave the way. May we meet somebody at a well and share the love of Christ to them. First, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.